Hey everyone, Team UDF here for more ZQuest guide slash tutorial. Last time, we did nothing, no, we did a bunch of stuff. This time, we're actually going to get into it, so let's take a look at your first dungeon. Hooray! Shoot balloons and streamers everywhere. Okay. So first of all, what you want to make sure you do is set the, the blue and the green tiles out here. Should be the coordinates if you put them in the same spot as me. And now let's go to map 2. We're going to go to screen 83 and copy it with the C button. Because this is going to be the template we use for most of our dungeon design. When you're doing this with a custom tile set, you're going to quickly realize that you want to start designing your dungeons without the template. Or to alter the template uh, greatly. So anyway, let's go over here to... Um, yeah, let's go to screen uh, 70. And paste it, and it'll look funny, but when you scroll off and back, it'll it'll look fine again. Let's do 71, 72, 62, 52, 51, 50, 60, 63, 64, 54, 55, 56, 66, 76, 75, and 74. Yeah, kind of, there we go, kind of a random, random design. Now we'll do 67 as well, actually. A bit of a random design, but that's okay. And we're going to start our adventure on screen 70... Yeah, we'll start on 70. Okay, so this is your very first dungeon screen. What do you do on it? Well, if you go to Tools, and you go to Doors, you can actually set up doors. And if you're using a custom tile set, this is where you have to start discovering how you're going to do things properly. Like, some tile sets have multiple templates and everything. Like, my tile set has a forest temple template, and then a, a link to the past template. So I want to make sure that the door combo set I use matches the template I'm using. And what what these are is that it basically says, where do you want your doors to be? And it'll appear in the middle here. So you can see these, these little middle areas here. For the NES tile set, that's where they appear. For any other tile set, that's where they appear as well, but it's not as always, uh, it's not always as easy to see that. So in any case, let's go to Tools and Doors. Just go down, and we're going to make a passageway. We're going to make a locked door on the top and we're going to go to the right and make it a passageway all right so there you go like you could really stop here if you wanted this is a this is a basic dungeon room it's not that impressive and it's got nothing in it but there you go so how does the game have any freaking clue what you're doing here well remember to set the green and blue tiles let's go ahead and put them down at 160 there and now since this is a dungeon it needs its own dmap and some more different. So let's go ahead and make the D map. Let's just go to two here. We'll call it level one, I suppose. It, we do want it to be a dungeon type. However, we want to go to map two this time, and there you can actually see the the uh, the rooms that we've placed down there. And now we start changing a few other things. There are these work slightly differently. If you want Link to walk forward into the doors. Like, if you want him to leave the vicinity of the door when he enters a room in a dungeon, you want it to be a dungeon type. If you don't want Link to do that, you want to use Cave. However, be careful with Cave, because the shutter doors and walkthroughs and bombable walls sometimes, probably often, don't work with the Cave. So we're going to take a dungeon because we're going to do something really basic and simple for the first dungeon ever. And you want to change the level to 1. You need to have the level be 1 through 8, if you want a Triforce piece in the dungeon. And we'll say that we want a Triforce piece in this dungeon. See, we're going to make it level 1. And now, what do you do here? You'll notice this, this grid is slightly different. Like, this is how it was in the overworld. And you can also see it zoomed out here. Well, in the dungeon type of D-map, we can actually build the dungeon map right here. What you're going to do is you're going to click in all the boxes corresponding to the rooms that you have in your level. See how we've built this here? We're going to build that exact same shape by clicking in these boxes. And now when the game, like when, when we're in game and we get to dungeon map, this is what the dungeon map will look like. It'll have those rooms labeled on it. And we don't have anywhere for our compass yet, so we're going to leave that blank. However, we want to continue at the beginning of the dungeon, which was screen 70. And we're also going to click the Continue Here box. Now, appearance. This is also something else that has to change because we're doing a dungeon instead of the overworld. For the NES tile set, this is relatively simple, but for your custom tile set, 
you're really going to have to learn what colors go with what set here, what makes them look good. So since this is level one in the NES tile set, you just go to number one, turquoise and blue. Go ahead and title it if you want. You can name your own levels. And you can even have a DMAP intro. Like, you could be like, level, level one. Oops, I want to click out of that. Whoop. Level one, enter the doomsday, or something like that. You could, you could have your own intro. I'm not going to have any intro. And for music, I'm just going to pick the basic dungeon music. We're not going to worry about subscreen maps. Although I suppose, okay, what you want to do, like, if you want to change the subscreen map, if you have designed your own subscreen map or something, I think this works for everything, is you're going to just click somewhere on this, and you're going to find the first tile of the subscreen map that you want. So let's say it's this tile, and I built a box around. Actually, is there a box here somewhere? Yeah, so let's say we wanted we wanted this, like, mini-map on our thing or whatever. We would click the top leftmost tile, and we would we would click enter and, whoops, we would click enter and go out of that. And then that would be the, it would, it would draw that shape in the whole thing. You only have to pick the first tile, I believe. In any case, so we're done with that, we're done with that, we're done with that. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And now we've built a D-map. Link has to get in here somehow. Let's go back to map one. We're right on the screen we need to be. Let's go ahead and set up a tile warp. Now, we don't have to place any other tiles down because this tile down here was a cave walk down. So that's exactly what we need. Let's go ahead and set the tile warp. We're going to make it an entrance exit. And now we're actually going to go to the level 1 D map. See how it brought up the what the dungeon map will look like in game. So go ahead and let's have link warp to screen 70. It doesn't matter that it still says 0 times, or 0 X rather here. So let's hit go to make sure that's where we appear, and there it is indeed. We do appear in this room. How does Link leave? Well, you might think we need another tile warp. We actually don't, because remember this bottommost tile down here is where Link is going to be walking. But look, that's just that's just nothing. It doesn't have a combo type. So the only other thing we can do is actually side warp Link out of here. So we're going to have the, the side warp triggered when Link goes down and out and out of the room. And it's going to also be an entrance exit. And we're going to go to the overworld D map and what was that? Screen forty I don't remember what screen it was. Was it 47? Yeah, it was 47. Okay. All right, so there you go. Link will warp into the dungeon. He'll appear down here, and when he leaves the dungeon, he should appear out here. Fantastic. And now that that's, that's done, all the basic stuff is done, let's go ahead and spruce up the room a little. It kind of looks kind of bare for a very, very basic like starting room. In fact, I'm gonna, I, think that, I think they were here. Like I said, I've never actually played the official first quest, except for like recording one scene for Tales from Cyrodiil episode. So I've never actually seen it. But we're going, we're going to go ahead and design the first room like this. And you know, what I like to do is I'll, I'll probably add some sand here or something. So let's find a a tile set where the sand looks somewhat believable. Here it is. What or color set rather? It's color set five. Kind of give it a bit more color to the room. Back to C set two. All right, so there we go. There's our first room. It's it's done. You don't have to do anything from here. Usually, a first room won't have any enemies in it. So let's go to the right here. But now we have to connect these rooms together. We're on screen seventy one. We have to connect these rooms together. So what we need to do is we need to make a door. But let's say for this one, we want the door to shut once Link walks through it. So we're going to select a shutter door combo type, and there it is. And let's leave that for now. Because remember, this door is locked, so Link needs a key eventually. Well, how does he get the key? Well, go ahead and head to data. You could actually do this one of two ways. I'm going to do it the basic way uh, for this first key here. We're going to go to item. This will select what items in the room, remember. So scroll down to K for key and select a normal key. And it appears up there. Can you remember what to do from here? You want to go to that page two on the bottom menu down here, click the rupee icon and go ahead and place the key wherever you want. You might want to center it, you might want to throw it in the corner somewhere. It all depends on how you build the room. 
This is kind of a boring looking room though, so let's go ahead and put some blocks down or something. Give this room a little bit of extra life. Right, now this isn't centered, but there you go. You use something like that, I guess. Uh, I'll go ahead and take these out. There we go. Okay, so how does Link get the key? Well, right now, when Link walks into the room, the key's automatically going to appear. There's nothing stopping the key from appearing at this moment. So what we actually want to do is we want to go to data and screen data. And now this is where we can modify some of the rules for the room. I don't remember. I think off the top of my head, the en if there's enemies in the room and nothing else is set, they should automatically trigger the shutter doors once they're all defeated. So I think we can leave that alone. However, what we also want is the enemies implies item. That means in order to get the item in the room, you have to kill the enemies. We want that. Let's go ahead and select that, and we'll save here. And, of course, we need some enemies in the room, so hit the E key, or scroll down in uh, Data. Now let's throw some enemies in here. Let's put some Stalfos Sisses. Put, like, five Stalfos or something. It all depends on how difficult you want your quest to be and whatnot. And at this point, you could be done with the room, or you could... You know, you could use the flags and specifically place the enemies. There's nothing really special about this room, though. So, flags 37 through 46 here don't do us much good just yet. But we do want to do something else to this room, and this is also another nod to the tutorial quest that I watched in the past. Or do we? You know what? No, I'm not going to do that. We'll go ahead and stop that there. And now... We're going to have to go up to screen 60 here. Tools and doors. So go ahead and let's make a locked door in the down position. And we'll just have a... We'll have an, another shutter door in the up position here. We want Link to have to do something in this room. Okay, guys, uh, you're going to want to go to screen 50 and make a, a passageway in the down position here. I actually did some other stuff. In, a, in an alternate recording session. However, it didn't work out because this version of Zelda Classic is weird for some reason. With, the ti with this tile set, though, with other tile sets, I think what I was going to show will work. But anyway, uh, so we're just going to leave it at here now because I'm also on a time constraint due to people going to sleep and whatnot, so I'll have to be quiet around here eventually. Uh, but next time, we will be getting into more of the aspects of the dungeon, like completing puzzles and Guiding Link towards the the boss key, the dungeon map, the compass, all that good stuff. And for now, let's just go ahead and test what we've got. So what I did is, I set the initialization data, I gave Link the wooden sword, the raft, uh, four bombs, and 20 rupees. And I'm going to have him actually start in the dungeon D map so that we can kind of test this a little faster. So let's bring up uh, Zelda Classic here. And if you've been saving in your tutorial file, you might have to make a new one in order to restart in, in this spot here. Okay. So let's do this. Gotta kill the Stelphoses. Okay, they're dead. The door opens and we get the key. Let's go on through here. And go up to the door. Don't have to do anything. Just walk into it and the door unlocks. And now since we haven't set any triggers in here whatsoever, the shutter door will just open automatically because there's nothing stopping it from doing so. Now we can go in this empty room and do nothing. And if you go in your subscreen, you can kind of see it's drawing the, the map the way we had it. It's got indentations in the directions we've made rooms most of the way. But yep, that'll do it for this episode. Actually, let's check our our stuff first. Yeah, that kind of works. Kind of works. This works, though. All right, just make sure you, pl you place them in that specific location. So, yep. We can go out and do this again. Uh-oh. Now we can cheat. We can get a second sword. Yeah. This one actually... It won't do anything. It just won't count it. We can pretend we have two swords, though. Whee! Alright, everyone, so that'll do it. And uh, I know I didn't have in-game sound here, but 
I didn't really want to start fraps up and do that whole syncing thing because of my uh, my time constraint. So hopefully you guys could deal without the sound for this one small testing segment. But yes, your music and everything should work. Did we set under combos on the screen? No, we didn't. Let's go set some under combos. Okay. Let's go back to map one, screen 47, and set our under combo. I believe we forgot about that. All right. So like I said, next time we'll be doing more dungeon stuff. Probably decorate some of these rooms a little bit more and hopefully get something fun out of the first dungeon. So thanks for watching everyone. I will see you next time for more Z-Quest. Tutorial, I don't know what this is. Bye!